Hey guys, I wanted to make a video tutorial um, just to go over all the features that I put in the program. So I'm assuming that you've downloaded the 7-zip archive and extracted it. You should have a folder open here. And uh, right now this only works on Windows and Mac. Uh, I'm assuming that Linux users would be able to do everything that my program does without my program. I mean, all I'm really doing is using these um, command line programs here, X264 and FFmpeg, MKV merge and FAAC. So it's just basically a nice little simple GUI that sends some commands to the command line. So to open it up, you just double-click the jar file. Get this window. Um, video input. Um, should be able to accept any kind of video. Anything with this extension, with one of these extensions. Um, however, I recommend uh, if you're exporting from an editing program that you export uh, in an uncompressed format because that's what this program is for compression so you don't want to be doing that twice so I have my sample AVI here on my desktop uh, I have default encoding settings I mean this is CRF18 for X264 HD video that's actually pretty high but it should work for a almost anything. You can of course go in and configure it yourself. Unfortunately the bitrate option is only for one pass right now, not two pass. But I plan on adding two pass encoding later for the people that really um, prefer two pass. I know there are a lot of you. Uh, I usually use constant rate factor just because it's really easy, really simple. And, <clears throat> I mean, if you don't know what constant rate factor is, I'm sure you can find out. But, you know, here you can modify the various settings for encoding using X264. I've added some presets. Fractality gave me settings that he recommends and I also just used uh, just created some generic YouTube preset CRF 20.5 and you know it should work well for YouTube I know pretty much everybody makes videos for YouTube now so <clears throat> you could also if you want uh, check this little checkbox, use custom, and then you can write whatever text you want in here. So let's say we actually do want CRF18, you could just replace that. Or what other, whatever other options you want, you can specify them here. And if this is checked, it will use exactly the text that is here. Now, this also means that uh, it's basically going to grab the text directly and feed it to the command line, so if you made a mistake, for example, if the space isn't here, it won't encode because it won't be able to interpret this flag. So there is some risk, I suppose, in using the custom settings, but I'm assuming you you know what you're doing. Uh, other than that, the configuration window does all that for you, so you don't have to worry about syntax. You can just go ahead and you know press hit save and it'll it'll apply those settings. Here you can specify your output location. I'm just gonna put it to the desktop, name the file test. And if you want it to be an MKV, its default is MKV, or if you want MP4, you can choose that as well. So now that you have all this set, your input video, your 
options for video encoding and your output location, you have two options. You can either encode using this button. This encodes only the video and you'll just get a test.mp4 file that's video using x264. Or you can hit one click encode and basically does exactly what the pop-up text says. Just takes the audio from the input file, encodes it to an M4A file using AAC and right now I have a preset uh, just using uh, the uh, Quantizer 500 I believe is what it's called. It's a really high bitrate setting and I'm assuming you're using high quality audio source <coughs> so Q500 should be good for anything. Uh, maybe in the future I'll add audio options but most operating systems have you know <coughs> pretty good audio encoding software already so I decided not to add that in the first release but if people really want that I guess I could add it in shouldn't be too much trouble but yeah I mean if you want your own audio um, to mux you can use your own program and you know render out or uh, en encode an M4A and then mux it using your own program as well and you can just use the encode option here and use the video from it and that'll be fine but I'm gonna hit one uh, one click encode this option is uh, also exactly what it says here. If I don't check it, then it's going to output three files. It's going to output a video file, mp4, test.mp4, an audio file, test.m4a, and a muxed file, test-muxed.mp4. If I hit cleanup, it'll delete the uh, intermediate files, basically, and just leave the muxed file. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit one-click encode and this is only a three second clip so it should encode pretty quickly and there you go you have your video audio and muxed file all right there um, I've also added a, a video splitter I know a lot of people capture gameplays and you know need to clip out their uh, the clips basically the only important parts of the gameplay afterwards sometimes this can be tedious but using this we can easily do that so I guess I can just pick a random clip here and it'll automatically output to the same uh, format It'll copy the video and audio streams and just output it to the same file but between whatever times you specify. So let's name it tester and it automatically knows that it's an AVI so it'll name it tester.avi and we want to have it between 1 and 1.30 and then I'll hit split. Now I didn't add a progress bar for this because to be honest I was lazy. But it shouldn't really take that long considering that it's not encoding anything. It's merely seeking to the location that you specified, copying the streams until this point, and then writing that to a video file. So really shouldn't be uh, that intensive, shouldn't take that long. Sometimes it takes a little longer to uh, find the location if it's, you know, further into the video. But it really shouldn't uh, be that intensive. So I guess I'll just skip to the end here whenever this is done. 
Okay, and the window closes after it's done, so it just finished, and here's my output file. And it's 30 seconds long, and it's basically, uh, you know, it contains the same video data that the original contained just within this time frame. So, you know, for those of out there uh, that, you know, could use something like that, I'm glad I added it. Uh, I just thought that uh, it would be convenient because uh, I, I, I've known how to do this for a long time using FFmpeg. It's really a very simple uh, and even short command in the command line. And it really wouldn't take me that long to implement it in here, so I did. So yeah, there you go. Uh, in the future, you know, a lot of people have been asking about batch encoding, you know, queuing up just like a giant list of files to encode, all with possibly different encoding settings and just, you know, hitting enter or hitting encode and letting that run overnight or something. Um, I, I uh, do plan on adding these features, but I now have a lot less time since school started back up. And uh, <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is development is going to be slower than it has been. I basically wrote this program in the last month of uh, my summer break. But anyway, I'm starting to ramble, so I'm just going to cut myself off and say uh, if you have any bugs, please report them to my email at bjorn248 at gmail.com, and that's in the readme as well. So uh, if, you, if you'd like to see anything that you think would be useful and, you know, you think that I could possibly... Uh, add, let me know, and we'll definitely talk about it. I'm open to ideas, and uh, enjoy the program.